Hi everyone, happy Sunday. So uh, Friday I did my coloring supply and book haul for May. If you want to go check that out. Uh, there was a last series of books that I purchased over the past week that uh, I did get with some birthday money. I've not yet done a flip through, so that's what we're going to do today is flip through all these books. And that should take care of all the new books I got for May. So, let's get started. So this first one is kind of a coloring book, um, kind of a watercolor tutorial type book. Um, Dana Fox has a series uh, called Watercolor With Me, and there is a jungle, a forest, and an ocean one. And of course, y'all know I like uh, uh, jungle drawing uh, and line art. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to color. So this is really the first one that I wanted in the series. I'll probably get the forest one next down the road. Um, but this is really cool because you get to um, learn how to color different elements from, the, from a jungle. So this book, we'll go ahead and use the Wildflowers book since it's average sized coloring book, is not as tall as most books and not as wide or wider, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm all over the place. That's, if you want to pause and read. Ram. Oh no, winter he's, now winter he's squawking. What's the matter, girl? So in this book, you get an introduction. Basically, you get a faint sketch of each subject on the right-hand page and details to complete each piece on the left, along with tips, supplies, color palettes, and tools required. Um, there are two different sections, wet on wet and wet on dry. So she uses the Windsor Newton Cotman line of watercolors, which are actually uh, the set watercolors I just got so that works out well um, there's some other supplies that you may need as well nothing too um, unusual as far as I can tell just brushes a black permanent ink pen white gel pen paper towels water mixed palettes paints here are some brush recommendations So this talks about wet on wet techniques. So for each page, you get a really nice thick watercolor paper on the page that you're going to be working on. And so the, I guess this one shows you how these are done and then you can do them yourself. So here is how each page is. You get a sketched object. You get the colors and the directions on how to create um, this look. And I really like this because not only can I use this in the jungle coloring books that I have um, for existing art in them, but um, the way these sketches look, I can probably, I don't know, it may be hard to see them after I've painted them in. So I might take pictures of these and this may be a good um, source piece to use to sketch in additional items. So we have the hibiscus, the blue morpho butterfly, a black panther, toucan, kinkajou, a macaw. Papaya, papaya, blah. The brain, it don't work no good. It ain't no good, just toss it out. <laughs> I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it, which is true. I only have half a cup of coffee in it. 
I'm going to stop trying to pronounce these because I have a feeling I'm just going to screw them all up. Except for some of the obvious, like pandas. So you get animals, but you also get plants and different types of fruits that you would find in the jungle. I like the jewel beetle a lot. Greens and blues tend to be some of my favorite colors. So, so this is a also wet on dry practice page. So here's like if you want to create a fur texture. And so this shows you, I guess the original, all the others are probably a wet on wet technique and these are going to be a wet on dry. I like this one a lot because you get to practice some fur, which is something I would really like to get good at. really nice thick good quality uh, watercolor paper <clears throat> I have a feeling you'll work on the page and then the next page you're not um, you probably won't get any bleed through at all even on the wet on wet I would be curious to see but tree frog He is a sassy looking tiger. I love that, that frog. Like I said, those real tropical blues and greens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of my favorite colors. And then about the author. The one thing I wish this had were some different types of plants, like a few different types of, um, you know, giant leaves and plants and stuff. I wish she had had a couple of those in here, but that's a minor, minor complaint. So they do have a watercolor workshop website. She does have a YouTube channel. I need to go check that out and an Instagram page. So I'm pretty excited about this. These seem to be smaller projects, so I don't feel quite so overwhelmed. All right, we'll just go ahead and go with this one next. Uh, Jessica Mazurkowicz has a book out for under Creative Haven called Wildflowers. It got a little marked up on the cover here. I might be able to get a damp cloth to get that off, but I'm not really too too ruffled about it one way or another as long as the pages themselves are are good so so i believe it's 31 images in these types of books i've not bought just a regular creative haven book in a while um i bought a bunch that i liked there at the beginning and then um really unless it's marjorie sarnett or marty noble um i haven't really been buying many I just, these, again, I could collect, kind of like the Disney books in that, I could collect a whole bunch of them um, easily, but I, for, to spread the love across other books and everything, I mostly just kind of focus on the ones that come out every now and then that I like. There is the description paragraph if you want to read it. I like the ones that look kind of like uh, seed packets. I think there's actually uh, a book out with those. I would like to have that eventually. So she does, I believe, on the back of each page, she says which flowers are in the previous image. So you have this nice little wreath here. And then on the next page, this says, 
it's hard to read. Sunflowers, Black-Eyed Susans, Cornflowers, Poppies, Forget-Me-Nots, and Ferns. So I like that. I like that they're labeling the flowers. I would like to do a like little plot of land where I just toss out some wildflower seeds, especially ones that are kind of bird and butterfly friendly. I just wasn't able to get to it this year. I wish they would put, you know, for ease of purpose of flipping, um, I wish that they would put landscape and portrait pages together. Like this one with the frog and the, it's like irises next to it. And yeah, irises and water lilies. Writing's a little hard to read at this angle. So what I think is these are divided in the sections and each wildflowers from the particular region are featured in the next sets of pages. I think that's how this is going. really pretty pages in here. Not big on uh, quote pages, but this one's all right. One every now and then's all right, I suppose. I'm going to get it in a minute. I do like fla the flowers from Jessica Mazurkiewicz. Her floral design book is a color by number book. I'm hoping to finish this year and is probably one of my favorite color by number books. Though I haven't colored in it in a few months, I'm, I need to at least get one page done this month. I think this was on the front and side cover right here. Like these are all split up in the regions, which is really cool. Yeah, the one that has like the different seed packets in it might be the next one I get eventually. I need to add that onto my list because I, I really kind of like those. There we go. There is another finished picture in the back. And there is wildflowers. Joseph Kettenbang um, just released this Mythographic Voyage book. If you're not familiar with Mythographic books, this looks very, if you are, this looks very similar to the height and width of the other books. Might be crazy. It feels a little thicker than they do, but maybe they're the same. I don't know. Um, can't say that for sure yet. However, um, this isn't as tall as a regular coloring book, but it is longer.
and it would help if you want to pause and read. Sorry if you hear that in the background, it should shut up in a minute. It's a reminder for my husband. I love this little fennec fox in the cup. I just think he is adorable. And of course I love this picture. See if I can zoom in a little. I like this one with the frogs. I see a lot of circles and like little bubbles in in these pages. I'm not sure to the meaning of those. I think that's just kind of like this one's in a sort of a drop of water. It may be a theme that's just recurring through the book. I like that she's on the little paper swan there. They're all actually like origami. That's cool. There's the little Fennec Fox. So she's the one in the cage and the birds are, did the birds put her there? Is that, is that what we're insinuating here? Like, see how you like it. So yeah, those kind of circles like that are kind of a theme. I think also kind of helpful in they're around a lot of the light sources. Ugh. Sorry, me and spiders don't get along. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this book. Like, there's some images I love, like this one right here with her and the cat. sailing next to the like giant goldfish in the sea. Some of these pictures I really like. Some of them just look really complicated and I would spend, I would get a headache just trying to figure out which part of the picture goes with what, you know. I have to sit on this one for a while. I think overall it's it's definitely a keeper. I just I don't know if I love all the images in this book. It's kind of been me with the mythographic books is that um, sometimes the pictures just feel like I'm I feel like I get almost overwhelmed looking at them, trying to figure out what pieces go with what. Some of the books I've, are great. Some of them I'm not as huge a fan of. It's 
so I guess these are supposed to be lightning bugs because they've got the little circles around them. And some people may not like those little circles either, so that's why I think these flip throughs are important so you can really see what's what in these books. Of course, y'all know I love the space ones. Though I'm not really sure how much oxygen she's getting with all those flowers in, in there with her. See, I do really like this picture. I think this is a fun one. Kind of like Dessert World or something. Diabetes World. But I like this one. It's not as complicated, but it looks like there's smoke coming out of the pumpkins. But I, it, like, she's just sitting there reading. I guess she's casting a spell. Maybe she's helping them to grow or something. And that cat is just, the cat is like me and just doesn't care at all. These kind of remind me of axolotls a little bit. Kind of like weird forest spirits. There's definitely quite a few images in the book. Again, it may be typical to the mythographic books. I'm not sure. This definitely checks a box in the little little unusual type coloring books just for the, all the fantasy elements I do like that there are uh, male figures in the book not just not just women but they're men too in the book i really like that i like this picture a lot again not super complicated it's um got a guy instead of a gal uh you've got the fox you've got the hydrangeas it's just i don't know that's i feel like that's a really neat picture they're all neat pictures but like some of them obviously draw my eye more than others So yeah, circles are definitely a thing in this book. So you got like a couple snow globes here. And this one's neat too. It's a little muddled down here, but I I like the overall premise. A lot of flying fish in this world. Another cool little space one. It's like she's on a swing holding a spaceship. She's on a swing in space? Or maybe she's just on the ground. Who knows? You could probably make it look... Probably would look similar either way, so... Alright. 
so yeah, quite a few pictures in that one. Um, I do have his Wild Winter and Dream Garden. I think those are the only two. No, I have Paradise as well. So I've got three of them so far. I don't have any of the others yet, though. All right. I will put the total number of pages down in the description like I always do. Um, so if you are curious how many pages the book has, um, I always make that part of the description. So This is a fun one that I am really looking forward to getting into. Amazon recommended this to me. I have not seen this anywhere before. Um, this is American Cryptids, a coloring book for the strange and unusual. It says off art by Sophia, art by Sophia something. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce that. And it says published by Paranoid American, which sounds a little iffy here, you know, with this little symbol and stuff. But um, I don't know if they have any other books or not. I didn't think to check. But you get 25 unique cryptids. And of course these are supernatural creatures that um, like American legends. Uh, yeah, American legends, supernatural animals. And uh, it's Amazon printed, typical coloring book size. One of the things I really like about it is that well, here's the copyright page. I have no idea what this group is like. I don't know what the... <laughs> Sorry, I just read the all rights reserved paragraph. <sighs> Leroy. Violators shall be buried in the rough sands of the sea at low water mark or the tide ebbs and flows twice per day. My goodness, now there is, <laughs> there is a um, note of caution there if I ever read one. I know nothing about this publisher, by the way. I may have to go dig and see if they have anything else, because I think this, this book's great. I really do. Um, I, am, I am quite tickled by it. So, um, they name all the cryptids. They... Uh, have them listed here in the front. They have little thumbnails uh, when it, the first sighting was reported and the location. And I was telling uh, in Friday, Friday that the Hopkinsville Goblin is actually pretty close to where I live. Um, I live right along the Tennessee Kentucky state line and Hopkinsville Kentucky is within a day's drive of me easily. So um, I think I think that's amusing. And, and you know what's funny is I never heard of it until I watched, um, there is a great channel that does um, store, different stories about different legends and invo involves cryptid, covers a lot of cryptids. And, um, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of them, but I'm going to put them down in the description. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you might enjoy their, their uh, YouTube channel, so... So you got the Loveland Frogman, Sasquatch and Bigfoot, Cactus Cat, which is stinking adorable, by the way. I don't know his story. I'm sure it's not a good one. Thunderbird, Jackalope, Melonheads, Busco Beast, Shunka. Oh, I'm not going to pronounce that. I don't know what that is. Cassie Monster, Bassigator. Bastigator, Chupacabra, of course. Um, okay, so it's not just U.S. cryptids; it's just different, um, different ones. It's looking like North and South America. It looks like Puerto Rico is part of this. So, um, Popelik Monster, that's in Louisville, Kentucky. That's actually also a day's drive for me. Um, should not surprise anybody that some of these are near me. The Wampus Cat is in the Appalachian Mountains, so <laughs> some of these I'm skipping over because I can't pronounce them. Bat Squatch, Van Meter Visitor, Betsy Monster, Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil's very familiar, Ozark Howler, Mothman, Montec Monster, Nyan Rogue, Lunkasus, 
a Wendigo. Now, a Wendigo, shoot. I'll admit, I don't, I don't like Wendigos. <laughs> no, no, too many freaky stories. I love the first report is in question marks here. So there we go. Then you get these really awesome pictures. They're not complicated at all. And they're not like super spooky or gory or anything. They're just fun. And I mean, for some of these, I may look up the urban legends just to see if there's any, you know, it, you know, the, it looked like this, it was this color, that color, or I like the cactus cat. I may just color in all greens. See, that looks adorable. And well, I think, and the story behind these is always pretty disturbing. So I think, I don't think he's probably this cute in, in real life based on the people who have seen him. Thunderbird, this looks like a rock band logo right here. Like a, ta a, a tattoo option. Jackalope. I lose most of them after this. Those, however, look disturbing. And some of them look a little disturbing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But not enough I'm going to have nightmares or anything. I think they're really well drawn. He doesn't look like he's having a good day. That is resting gator face, I guess. I like how some of these have little uh, spaceships. And that one's pretty creepy looking. Not, and again, the Wendigo, that will be probably the last one I color in this book, because no thank you. I actually didn't even know that there was a makeup of what it looked like until now. Well, I guess they're not cute and cuddly. Except maybe the cactus cat. He looked pretty cute and cuddly. The rest of these maybe not so much. No, this is the one to go, isn't it? My bad. Yeah. I don't want... Whichever one that other one was, I wouldn't want to mess with them either, but I really don't want to mess with this one. Oh, they do have other books. <laughs> Cult of the All-Seeing Eye. Paranoid Portraits, a coloring book. Paranoid Pamphlet, MK Ultra. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyway, I think this is a pretty cool little book and something unique. I don't see that out there very much. So actually, I don't think I've ever seen anybody flip through that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Strange Design Coloring Books, which I already have a couple of theirs. Cats Attack and Cats in Space. There is Magical Cat Creatures. Amazon printed. Typical size coloring book. I saw someone, someone's channel flip through this, and I just thought it was fun. Y'all know me. Cats and cats doing weird things are always, always something I consider when I purchase a coloring book. We do have test pages, and then we get started. Definitely some catacorns in here. Do not start with me right now, Leroy. 
don't start. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Will you please go outside and let mommy finish? Go. Go. I don't know what his deal is. Medusa cat. Which I thought was fun. The sirens, I guess. Giant catacorn in space. Catacorn head. I like this one a lot. Little butterfly cat. These are either giant mushrooms or he is a tiny cat. And I like this one a lot on Friday. I said I feel like they put a little hat with like an elastic beard on the cats. They're supposed to be cat gnomes, I guess. Kind of like Pegasus. But Catechus? I don't know. Phoenix cat. <laughs> okay. I don't know. That scorpion tail. I, I could get past the wings, but I'm not so sure about that scorpion tail on that on that one. Out there dancing with his little hangout. Sorry. Leroy is being difficult and he's really starting to upset me. I don't know what his problem is. He was trying to jump up on something he shouldn't be getting into and bending papers and just that cat gets plenty of attention trust me <laughs> I will see what he wants in a minute but he will be fine of course per maid got a couple of those dragon cat with a cat princess you know something you see every day which cat washes which part like do they just do they have their own special zones or do they take turns or <laughs> when they bathe themselves these are the questions we should be asking Wizard cat. I don't know what cat, but very disturbing. <laughs> very disturbing cat, I think. Thank goodness they don't breathe fire, y'all. And then a couple, a bonus page from Cats in Space. Cats attack. More cats, Tiny Cats by Coco Wyo, Amazon printed, your basic height and width. I feel like this paper, instead of being white, like just flat out white paper, is a little bit, has a little bit of a grayish tint to it. So keep that in mind if you are iffy about paper colors. I kind of wish Coco Wyo would go for the little bit better paper in the books but that's about the only complaint I have with them They're, well that and like their art depending on the artist can be a little con inconsistent nameplate page this however is a really cute book 
It is tiny cats doing tiny things. And I said, Friday, this is what I imagine heaven's like. All the cats, giant cat trees everywhere. A kitty vending machine. Nothing super complex, of course. I like this one a lot. Where he's sitting on the flower. And they're like little peas in the pod. Horse cat's face, absolutely love. I like these pages that have like just different little little bits and pieces on them instead of being just a whole encompassed scene. Though I do like this as well. Them with the little frog costumes is really stinking cute. A great Halloween picture with some ghost cats. One with a pumpkin on his head apparently. <laughs> That one looks like he's gotten stuck and he's really mad about it. Just eat your way out, dude. Maybe his poor little mouth can't reach the donut the way it's wedged in there. Kitty gumball machine. <laughs> he looks like he uh, hit hit the wrong way out and is tumbling out backwards. Sushi cats. This is a very cute book. Love the little bubbles. A little cat happy meal. No, no, excuse me. It reminds me of the ha look of the happy meals at, at McDonald's there, but that actually is a milk carton, I believe. Oh, wow, that one <laughs> on the bottom is getting the getting all the others piled on to him and he looks very, very mad about it. It's an interesting uh, spaceship there. Oh, 
That little one winking so cute. Those are the little like Tamagotchi type things. Alright. Mentions leaving Amazon reviews if you can. Checking out some of their other books. And there we go. Alright, last but not least, we have RJ Hampson's latest book, Dragon Dreams. Couldn't resist. This has a really nice uh, feeling textured matte type cover. It is two sets of unique, uh, two sets of, I can't remember how many unique images, but you get two copies of each one, so. I just can't resist. RJ Hampson, again, is ki my kind of unique fantasy type book. He kind of checks all the boxes for me. Nameplate page. Talks about using the book if you want to pause it and read. And then it's copyright page. I'm seeing a lot of lines through pages that have bat black black backgrounds lately on uh, Amazon printed books. I don't know if that's just a issue with the specific printer I'm getting these books from or what, but so all his ones have a title, which I enjoy. So this is Sea Dragon, who looks like he's terrified of water. <laughs> Does that face not look like he's just like, ah, water, no. He's t it, that's pretty bad if you're a sea dragon terrified of the ocean. I, that feels that feels just just sad. The quest. Enchanted castle. Ill gotten gains where he is smugly sleeping on his loot. He's got the little, I guess, the little baby dragon over there, too. Dragon hatchery. Oh, she's got. Oh, no! What? <laughs> oh, RIP, little dragon. Oh, I see the little eggs coming through here. Very cute. I like that one a lot. There's that darn line, though. Not the biggest deal. I mean, really, in the grand scheme of things, I don't even think y'all can see it just a little bit. Still annoying, though. Loss. Poor little guy. Still life with dragon. My type of still life, if I do say so myself. So not only do you get kind of the spooky scary dragons, but you get some cute looking little dragons as well. It's almost like a Stargate. Very important dragons. The VIDs, I suppose. Learning to fly. So here's some cute little dragons. That one's got his eye on that bird. Actually, <laughs> multiple ones. Multiple birds are, are fleeing in terror here. That is really cute.
location, location, location. <laughs> I hope, I wonder if this is anybody's particular destination because, I mean, you got giant fish, you got giant squids or kraken or what have you, then you got sea dragons, you got your basic dragons here, like, this does not look like a uh, peaceful destination. If you're looking for adventure, this would be the ideal spot. If you're just looking to lay on a beach somewhere, I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, it's had a lost one, and then this is found. He lost his little egg. That's what it was. He was, or she, she wasn't lost. She lost her egg. Well, isn't that just a story and a half there? Better than some of the dramas on TV, let me tell you. love the little ones coming out of the nest down here. That's super cute. Oh, we have seasonal dragons back here. We have winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Very cool. I was going to say, it looks like he's sleeping off a bender, but um, seeing that skull there, I think he's sleeping off his meal. He's sleeping off his meal, dreaming about how he got his meal. Oh boy. That's not good. Dragon's Lair. Brave bunch of guys in that ship. Icarus. So you got kind of a steampunk dragon here. Tiny Hunter. And then here is the second set of pages, which is really cool. I don't necessarily mind that, but and it shows some of his other books back here. I kind of want to get the Pirates book, but I'm pretty happy um, with I have Fantasy Tiny Homes, I have Night Garden, Dragon Dreams, and I kind of want Pirates, but I think at that point I'm pretty, pretty happy with the ones I've got so far. So, all right. So, yeah, this one was a bit of a long one. We had quite a few books to cover. Tuesday, my plan is to show you guys the pencil and gel pen part of my Hannah Carlson Space Adventures picture to finish that up. Friday will probably be completed pages. The next Sunday, um, maybe a color and chat. Maybe I'll be able to get back to the Sunflower Kitty page because I have not been able to get back to that with pencil yet. Um, I had to pick a focus and it looks like it's going to be my space page. So... <laughs> That's kind of the plan right now. And then hopefully that next Tuesday, I did have somebody ask about trying the Neo Colors 2. Neo Colors 2. I said that right. Um, and so I'm hoping to do that as a demo for the first Tuesday of the month. So we shall see. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you, if you're in the U.S., hope you're able to uh, have some time with family and friends this weekend safely of course um because covid is still a thing <laughs> if you can you know be spend some time outside and uh we'll actually be going to see my parents tomorrow and uh hanging out with them a little bit and then we get uh, my husband and i are both off on monday so um June, I think, is going to be as busy as May, so I'm going to try to enjoy this weekend as a quiet, one of the last quiet weekends I'll probably have for, for a month, so. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and bye for now.